Hey, this is Joe's sister Nikki. I think I might be the only girl in the world who has a brother who spends his entire day in the basement pretending he has an internet radio show. Jeez. <laughs> Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. Well, money nerds, I am so happy to be here because this show wraps up eight weeks of podcasting. And for those of you who said I was sensational opening the show these last eight weeks, (laughs) I know. It's just so easy. But let's bring this ship into port with maybe our best Friday show ever. Today, we're talking financial self-talk. That's funny. Mom always said if I did that too much, I'd go blind. Well, we're also going to talk hiding money from yourself and weird money stories. To help us from the Money Nerds podcast, we'll welcome Whitney Hanson. Joining her from LenPenzo.com, that adorable ginger with a dreamy voice, Ed Sheeran. (laughs) I'm just kidding, it's Len Penzo. And rounding out our group, the author of Control Your Cash, Greg McFarland. God, I hate that guy. But that's not all. In our Friday FinTech segment, we welcome back the CEO of Money App Rise, Justin Howell. And now, the guy who's co-pilot on this last episode, Joe Saul Siha. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely just a co pilot. Doug's in charge. Hey, everybody. I am Joe Saul Siha, Average Joe Money on Twitter. And what a fantastic way to start your weekend with a little dose of the Stacking Benjamin Show. You know what? We've got a fantastic show for you today. But first, got to say a big Thanks to everybody who's gone to stackybenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. You know, magnify money. That's the place where you go when you're looking for that right checking account, savings account, a better debt repayment strategy, or maybe you pay your debts on time, but you're not getting any reward miles or reward credit or cash back. Nick over at magnify money says that if you pay your bills on time, and you pay your credit card off in full, and you're getting less than 2%, you're leaving money on the table. So here's what you do. I'm going to do it right now. You go to stackybenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. Here we go. And when I take a look at offers for cashback rewards, it tells me that the Alliant Cashback Visa Signature Card, oh, two and a quarter percent back. How about that? And then uh, Fidelity Rewards Visa Signature Card. And then you go on down. They also tell you about the annual fee. They tell you about the fine print that alliant card has a b rating for fine print the fidelity card has an a uh, and they also tell you about bonus offers the fidelity card has a hundred dollar bonus with a thousand dollar spent the alliant has no bonus and has a 59 dollar fee that's waived annual fee that's waived the first year the fidelity card has none so two percent cash back no annual fee looks really good uh 59 annual fee two and a quarter percent back gonna have to do a little math to see if that works uh, but in a lot of cases, that won't. Anyway, see how easy that was? StackyBenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. And this show is also brought to you by FamZoo. Wouldn't it be cool to teach your kids the good money habits they need to stack some Benjamins from the very beginning instead of learning the hard way after college, like I did, when you've already completely wrecked your credit and you got to figure it out later? Don't do it my way. Do it the FamZoo way. They have the answer. It is a financial education system where kids use prepaid debit cards. And you think, whoa, wait a minute. Don't want my kids using plastic. Kids don't pull money out of their wallet. Who, when's the last time you pulled cash out of your wallet? Okay, maybe maybe you have once in a while, but you know that you're the outlier. And increasingly, we're going to plastic. And responsible use of plastic is an important thing that Bill and team over at famzoo.com teach. It makes it easy and quick for you to move money to your kids, keep an eye on their activity, and you can even lock their card if you need to. It's the perfect training wheels for bank debit cards or credit cards later on, and it's safer and better track than cash, which kids can't use online anyway. Better yet, FamZoo has built educational features to teach them about compounding interest, budgeting, managing expenses, earning money through hard work, and lots more. FamZoo is an awesome way, awesome way to have teachable moments with your kids when it comes to money. People ask us all the time, how do I teach my kids good money habits? 
It's not the same as it used to be. Teach them the modern way. StackyBenjamins.com forward slash FAMZOO, F-A-M-Z-O-O. And uh, Bill Dwight, the chief dad over at FAMZOO.com, and his uh, team will take care of you over there. All right. We're going to take care of you here because, man, do we got a great episode. Whitney Hansen, How could we haven't had her on before? So happy she's joining us today. Justin Howell with some amazing news from Rise. Remember we had Rise back on in, uh, in March? telling you about them well they've made what i thought was a cool enough app to bring them on the show even cooler if you're a user of digit you want to pay attention because uh well i'll just roll into it let's get this party started all right let's walk across the basement here and dust off the shortwave call up some of my friends who are in the business of either financial writing or today it's podcasting. But I think we're going to start out in the desert where Mr. Greg McFarlane from Control Your Cash, the author of the hit book Control Your Cash, joins us. How's that? That's a better intro. You're punishing me by making me go first, aren't you? By the way, that's the book that Len Penzo said was the greatest personal finance book ever written. I've, ever written or that he ever read? I'm not sure which. It's a big difference. It's, it's that I ever read. Okay. Uh -oh. So there's probably I've, there's probably read, better ones read, out there. I've read two personal finance books. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and yours was way better than the other one, which was a self-published oh, ebook on a website that 38 people read. Greg, how how great is that? I, actually, I think the other one sold more copies than mine. It was the Simple Dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy that you're hearing, uh, who apparently is here with us, Len Penzo from Los Angeles, California, and the wittily named WenPenzo.com. When Penzo, I called you When Penzo. When Penzo the Cackler, yes, that's me. And and Greg, just it is a phenomenal book. Uh, like I said, I'm forcing my kids to uh, read it as well. It's it's uh, perfect for kids just leaving the nest. Thank you. Don't don't tell me that. Tell Whitney. Maybe she'll buy a copy. That's Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> hey there. Well, you're giving away our next guest. Actually, what's <laughs> funny is maybe Ms. X will buy a copy. <laughs> maybe mystery guest. Coming to us, the host of the Money Nerds podcast. It's about time she got here. Whitney Hansen joins us. Thanks, guys. I'm so excited to be here. And I guess I need to buy a copy of the book. Uh, you, 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 <laughs> you totally have to. Now, I don't know where you're located. Where are you at? Boise, Idaho. Awesome. And there's tons awesome. going on in Idaho tonight, sure. isn't there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so tell everybody about the Money Nerds podcast because you've got a fun show. And also fun, uh, you do uh, Facebook Live chats, too, which are awesome. Yeah, my Facebook lives are called Tipsy Tips, where we drink wine and chat about money. So it is a ton of fun. And the podcast is a, it's more conversational, but it's picking people's brains on that have done cool financial stuff or have cool jobs. So for example, I got to interview a guy that was an astronaut and spent 200 days in space. Awesome. And uh, it was really fun. It's so cool. And we'll link to the show and our show notes at stackybedjamins.com. Thanks for joining us. So let's get started, guys. We're going to start with the site that I think has the best name ever, manrepeller.com. This is written by Megan Naismith. And Len, I think we'll start with you. I love this idea that she talks about. If you keep telling yourself I'm broke over and over, it's it's like a bad thing to say over and over. Well, that's what she says. You know, I'm not sure I, uh, I necessarily agree with it, but that's what she says. Basically, when you use the term broke, she states that you kind of misuse the word because- we're not really broke. Most of us here in, in the developed world, compared to the undeveloped world, we're misusing the term. And so using broke is just a poor excuse for not wanting to spend things. Was that a pun on purpose, saying broke is a poor excuse? <laughs> yeah. Did you really do that? Yes. You thought you were going to get that one by me, didn't you? I thought I was. Yeah. <laughs> Whitney, is that all she's saying, though? Because I th I kind of thought she was saying something else, too, that you've got this self-talk going on, and that's not good for you. Yeah, I mean, I agree with it to a point. I thought it was a, a good point to make that the more you tell yourself the negative things, the more you start to believe that. However, my first reaction was, I agree, but if you are broke, you should probably be okay with being broke and not overspend, too. So I was a little contradictory there, but it was a, it was a point that I thought was interesting. You're saying it's okay to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm broke, so change your habit. Oh, heck yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, number one on her points here, because she's got several, and Greg will go to you, is uh, treat your money well. You know, Susie Orman, in her first book, says this same thing, that if you if you learn respect for a dollar, 
that's when you're going to start finally using dollars appropriately. You agree with that or is that a little foo-foo for you? Man repeller has never actually been about repelling men in the literal sense, but asserting your sense of self in your interactions with fashion every day. Oh, this chick sounds like a party. Haven't we established after, uh, I don't know how many podcasts, that most people overestimate their wealth as opposed to underestimating it? And I think not enough people say they're broke. I mean, we all have access to money. We we all have credit cards. Mm -hmm. Is it a case of spending the money that you have access to or spending the money that's rightfully yours? You're saying saying too many of us, Greg, flaunt money we don't have, pretend we're rich? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, It's not even pretending you're rich in, like, I'm going to buy $6,000 rims for my $4,000 car, but it's more like going out and every night of the week, socializing, more food, more alcohol. Yeah, I'll just slap it on the credit card and spend the next 20 years paying for it. Because it's not even that I don't want to look like a big shot. It's that I don't want to be left out. I don't want to be the person who's seen watching his or her pennies. Len, uh, but this idea of treat your money well, about uh, cleaning your wallet out, dumping the old receipts, having some respect for the dollar. Are you into that? No, uh, Joe, I'm telling you, this, I don't like this article. I'll, I'll be <laughs> honest with you. I think this article is garbage. I it's don't. New age, it's new age I totally don't. financial garbage. Treat your money well. I, I don't. I don't get it. You, taking your receipts out of your wallet. What? What is that? How does that help you? When somebody had a, they had a good point. They said, "Hey, I'm broke. I'm not going to spend something." She's saying, "No, you got to go about it this new age way." About here we are. Number one, treat your money well. Take receipts out of your wallet. Yeah, but uh, you're a natural. A, buy a fancy purse and to hold your money, and then when you pull your money out. You know, you can relish, you can cherish the money that you're spending. And I, I just don't get it. I mean, this is making something so complicated. Whereas if you don't have money to buy something, you recognize that. I don't care if you say you're broke. So what? You're broke. She, you recognize it. That's a good thing. She donated what? her chunky wallet, now uses a small change purse she found in London. It says it was handwoven by elderly Welsh woman, and that's a delight. I marvel every time I take it out, and I relish that pause. So every single time she takes out that change purse, she thinks about the value of her money. Whitney, does this speak to you at all? I mean, parts of it. I, I understand that honoring your money is important, but I, I think that the issue here is simply cleaning out your wallet and dusting off the dollars and making them all straightened out. That doesn't give you respect for money. What gives you respect for money is understanding that you worked hard to get that money. So to me, that's how you get more respect for money. So I didn't really resonate with that point specifically did, of did, her article. Did you like point number two though then? It, because I think you're speaking to point two. Thank yourself every time you complete a financial transaction. It says try Absolutely. It, try it for a week. Honor the work you did that allowed you to make that purchase. Yeah. That point spoke to me so much because it wasn't the thank yourself for transactions because I can see people trying to give themselves gratitude for spending extra money that they shouldn't have. Right. But she backed it up by saying, thank yourself that you were able to have the opportunity to pay those bills on time. And that I think is super critical. Yeah. It's almost like Greg, what Paula says on the show, which when you, when you go through a transaction, almost like you're adding up the money, it, the amount of hours it took you to make that money. So when you buy something, make it worth it. Exactly. And when you, when you start translating dollars into time spent affording those dollars, uh, yeah, it, it, it'll change your spending patterns drastically. What about this idea, Len? We're going to get something good out of you, Len, Mr. <laughs> Surly today. How about, how about no, number three here? Keep your money in your sights as much as possible. It says this means taking advantage of opportunities to see it move and change hands up close. Share it with your community by buying local, joining your neighborhood yoga studio, supporting small business whose supply chains you can see. You like that? I guess. What's that got to do with being broke? I, I, I don't get it. Okay, great. What does that have to do with anything? That's honoring your cash. <laughs> okay. Whitney, welcome to the show. <laughs> I love I don't want you guys to read any of my articles now. <laughs> know, that's right. <laughs> like, oh dang. <laughs> I know, really. All right. Uh number four then. <laughs> number four, Len. Give as much as you get. And it, it, it says you don't even have to give money. Give time, give service. No. Uh I guess. I guess I'm going to call my senator to protest the death sentence masquerading as a health care bill. What gets me is Megan here seems to confuse health care with health insurance, but that seems to be another issue. All right. We don't do politics here, so we're going to move, <laughs> we're going to move on. Man, Led is in rare form today. 
<laughs> Our second piece comes to us from BrokeGirlRich.com. When you get money, get rid of it. Whitney, can you, can you describe uh, uh, what Mel here is talking about? When you make money, get rid of it. She's not talking about spend it, is she? No, gosh, no. She's talking about just essentially putting it into savings account or allocating it immediately when you get it so that you're not blowing it at the end of the month. Len, tell me you like this idea of being a squirrel and squirreling the money away. <laughs> I do. And I like this. I like this article. And I even like the picture of the squirrel with the nut there, the acorn. Has that no, been, I, think that, I think this is a I think I like this article. This has, is a good one. All right. Has, has that been a key for you? The second you get money, get rid of it, get it out of your sight. I try to. Yeah. I, the, you know, that's one of the <laughs> it, what's really nice is if you can automatically route this stuff. And we talk about this all the time. It, automatically route as much as you can from your your paycheck as fast as you can. Your your bills, you can do your automatic pay. Your retirement, you can have it taken out of your paycheck immediately. The less income you have that you haven't already committed, you know, it's less likely for you to, to blow it on other things, you know? So yes, I'm totally, I'm totally with this uh, author here. Who is this author? This is Bro- Mel. Mel. Yep, Mel. Mel at totally broke, with Mel on this. At Broke Girl Rich. Greg, this sounds like a control your cash idea where you take money and hide it from yourself. Is it, have you always been a good saver? Or is this a technique you use? What, what, what a, uh, what a euphonious way of saying, have you always been cheap? And the answer is <laughs> yes, pretty much. What she's saying, I mean, it's kind of tautological here. Every dollar that you get, you either have to save or spend. If she means it literally keep the money out of your sight. I mean, I can't remember the last time. Well, now I'm exaggerating, but I really don't deal with cash all that frequently. I mean, money comes into one account. I disperse it into other accounts. It's just a handful of keystrokes that I have to take care of every month anyway. So I might as well do them early in the month. I think that's what she's saying more or less. Well, if the money sat in front of you though, Greg, would you spend it or would it still stay in your wallet? Yeah, I got everything I need and no kids. So I I would, I, I wouldn't spend it because Whitney, I get five bucks in my wallet. It's gone in a day. Oh yeah, I'm going to Starbucks, man. Right. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Hey, hey, don't you think like in the old days when, you know, my dad used to tell me that they'd come by work, you know, they'd come by the office, some girl would come by with an envelope and she would they would get paid in cash, right? Wow. In those days, I'd say it'd be a lot easier to blow your money because you got this big wad of cash in your hand when you walk out the door. You know, it's 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 kind of a blessing today that everything's Automa- it's digital and it's uh, it's it's automatically deposited. It's a lot easier to save today than it was in the old days when you were getting paid in cash. Well, I don't know about that because you look at these studies that show that plastic, people spend more money using plastic than they do if they spend from cash in their wallet. Well, I'm talking about the automat- the routing of it. Is yeah. th- you're right. I agree with you on that. I definitely agree with you on that, uh, Joe. But I'm talking about because it's digital, you can take your income from the beginning and route it away from you before you yeah. can get your grubby hands on it to spend it. But I think the key there is that's up to you. Whitney, are there any games that you play with yourself to get yourself to save more money than you would if it was just an envelope being paid to you in cash? Yeah. You, well, you guys kind of hit on it and when you first started talking about Paula's tip as well of putting it into how many hours do I have to work for this to actually get paid for? And that puts it into perspective. If you're going to go out to dinner and it's going to cost you 50 bucks and you're like, Oh God, I got to work an hour for this. You know, it, it helps you really see what your money is going towards. But I, I have to chime in on this because I like the idea of, yes, it's easier to set up automatic transfers today. However, the temptation for younger people is especially to buy because of, Oh, I saw this on Instagram or the, the advertising is so heavy that I would say that the temptation to spend is even stronger than it ever has been. Yeah. So you play that mental game then to get around that. Is there anything else you do? Do you use any apps or anything that helps you? Like, you know, you've got Digit out there, Chime or uh, uh, Clarity Money, uh, one of these things, Rise. I personally do not because it's it's all set up now, okay. but I'm a big fan of Capital. Yeah. I think that one's really fun to kind of gamify it and get you excited about saving. Yeah, that's cool. Len, do you use any tricks yourself like Whitney uses? Nope. I just... Uh... Because you're cheap I too. Because <laughs> you and Greg are cheap asses. That's that's. We are cheap. Look, we're cheap asses. But uh, y- you know what? Hey, it's uh, it's serving us well. Hey, I'm not so cheap. You know what? Next time uh, we're all together, you know, drinks are on me. I know. Well, and I'm kidding because I've I've hung out with you before, and you're not cheap. <laughs> You're Thank not a you, Joe. you're not a cheap date, Len Penzo. <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't even know where I'm going with you that. You just want 
I know what you want. You just, you're just going to get a double next time we go out drinking. That's I know it. that. That's exactly it. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move on to our third piece. And this one, uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this piece. I just thought it was kind of funny and a good way to set up uh, a little quick discussion here about things that have happened to us. Lost high school ring, quote, keeps fine, <laughs> keeps coming back to Florida woman. This is an Associated Press piece. It's a Florida woman says her high school ring keeps coming back to me. First, Shannon Rose Forrester, who lives near Pensacola, lost her class ring when she had a car wreck shortly after graduating from high school in 1979. Her father was a sheriff's deputy, eventually found the ring at a pawn shop. The second time she lost it was while stationed at a Navy Reserve Center in Hancock, Wisconsin, and somehow the ring made its way to a kitchen drawer in a house some 30 miles away in Custer, and she found it again. Anyway, she's found this ring four or five times, and I'm wondering... There any weird money? Everybody has a weird story, some weird transaction or weird money story that's happened to them. Whitney, you're our guest. We'll let you go first. Weird money yeah. story. Weird money story. So unfortunately, I've never had money keep like arising in the same area. That'd be really cool, <laughs> right. but I haven't been that lucky yet. So, uh, weird money story that happened to me and taught me a valuable lesson was in high school. I financed a car. My mother co-signed, so two no nos. And when I did that, I didn't really know much about cars. I didn't have somebody check it out. So I was like, oh, it's cute. It's a convertible. It's got nice graphics on the side. Let's go with that. Purchased it and pretty soon found myself paying for a car that had the motor blown out. So it was a knocking rod. So yeah, early life lesson, but a very, very good one. So that's one of my scary money stories for sure. What have you done since to not have that happen again? I drive a 2001 Toyota Celica. I've been driving the same car for like 10 years. There it is. Greg, how about you? Uh, Best one I have, and this is not even all that good, but it's the best one that I have, is 1977, probably before Whitney was even a foul thought in her father's head. (laughs) And I found a $195 check, and that was big money in those days, um, sitting on the beach between two pieces of driftwood. And I picked it up, and I showed it to my mother, and it was made out to wherever the payee was. Long story short, we found out that the guy lived not too far from my grandfather and showed up at the house one day and claimed his $195 check and gave me a shiny $5 Canadian bill. And that was when I learned that, yeah, honesty pays about two and a half percent. That's a great commission, Greg. And I held on to the five bucks. I don't think I ever, I I mean, I must've spent it at some point, but I can't remember on what. I can't tell you, by the way, how many social media people reached out, Greg, about your drumstick story. I had so so many people (laughs) reach out about that. That, that was just, oh, when your legs broke, (laughs) just unbelievable. People that didn't hear that, that was uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, Friday on the show. Go back and listen to that if you want to. Yeah, okay. yeah go in the archives because I'm not repeating it. Yeah, if, <laughs> yeah. If you want your stomach to turn, and then and then Lem Penzo doing salt in the wound by looking him up on eBay. <laughs> it's seeing that those drumsticks worth a lot less. Whitney's like, "What the hell are you guys talking about?" Len, I love you, it. This is awesome. Len, it's your turn to tell us this. Tell us a story, Uncle Len. Well, I was on the freeway once, following a armored car, and the door opened. No, and- come on. Can I finish my story? Okay. And the door opened and out came a brick of $100 bills. And so I pulled over and I picked up the money and it was counterfeit. No way. Really? No. That was gonna, I just made it. I don't have a story. That's, that's the best thing I could. I made that up on the fly. I thought we were going to be able to do a campfire stuff. And I was going to tell you a really, a true story that was really strange. Can I, can it be yes. money related? Yes. That happened? At this okay. point, at this so, point in the show, it's already off the rails. So, <laughs> let's do well, it. Well, Whitney and Greg gave the money. I really don't have a, a, a weird money story, but, but this is true. So help me God. My mother-in-law moved away from her home that she'd lived in for many, many, many years. A few months ago, she moved away. My son was there and he was, and her husband had passed away in the home seven or eight years ago. But my son was vacuuming, getting ready to move out, cleaning up the house, getting ready for the new people to move in. He's vacuuming and a picture in the room he's in falls down. It falls, it was on the dresser and it fell over. So he picks it up. It's the picture of his grandfather, his, the, my mother-in-law's husband, who's passed away. 
So he picked it up and he starts vacuuming again. And then he hears another picture fall over in another room. So he goes in the other room and it's another picture of my father, uh, his grandfather, my uh, father-in-law. And that had fought, picture had fallen over as well. And it just so happens that the father-in-law, one of the things he used to do every day was a vacuum in the house too. So it was just kind of like, and this, I swear to God, this is true. It's just like he knew my mother-in-law was moving out and he just wanted to say goodbye or something. I don't know, but it was the creepiest thing I'd ever, uh, it's just strange. Wow. A guy. <laughs> that is terrifying. It's real. No, I think it's a it, kind of a happy story almost, you know, so. But yeah, it's really strange. Greg, what kind of drugs you think Len's son was on when that <laughs> when that happened? <laughs> this for is all going on the cutting room floor, isn't it, Joe? For a prescription, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, seriously, they fell down. No, that was that was good. And speaking of that, this last week we were out on a run, and uh, and I run with a guy who's a surgeon, and he said the freakiest story he'd ever heard was they were bringing a guy out after surgery and the guy starts telling this story about how, and he had been dead on the operating table for a few minutes. And and he said he had been in a bright room. It's really long and it was packed with Asian people. He didn't know, the guy didn't know that the tsunami had happened just then in Asia. So he said that when he came back to life, he's like, I was in this bright room and there were tons of Asian people. How about that? Wow. Crazy. That is, that's yeah. strange, man. Hey, got to take a quick break from this awesome conversation with Len, Greg, and Whitney to say a big thanks to everybody who's gone to stackybenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. You know, that's a place that you go when you are comparison shopping everything you use to buy the things that you use. So whether it's an auto loan, if you have to take out an auto loan, student loan refinance, Parent Plus loans, secured credit cards, low interest credit cards, 0% interest, checking accounts, savings accounts. And in fact, like we do on every Friday, we're going to check out savings accounts. Here's what I'm doing. I'm heading to stackybenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. And there I am. I go to savings accounts. I already have 11,000 populated in here. So we're going to run with that, put in my zip code so they know it's available where I am and bang. We got two of them again this week at 1.4. Live Oak Bank at 1.4 and Dollar Savings Direct. And they rate Live Oak Bank uh, first because they allow you to open it with $0 and Dollar Savings Direct takes one. See how quick that was? Both of them on $11,000, it says that I'm going to get $154 in interest. And my favorite part, you know all that fine print stuff? They're both rated in A. So good stuff there. StackyBenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. Don't just walk into your bank, do some homework ahead of time. And magnify money is the quick, easy, and thorough way to get that done. And speaking of thorough, if you want to give your kids a thorough education, check out famzoo.com by heading to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash famzoo. Here's the thing. People ask us all the time about allowances and allowances are fantastic, but then helping your kids decide what that money gets spent on, how it gets saved. Those are all things that are important to do. And yet, think about this. How hard is it to set up some of that stuff? Well, famzoo.com makes it very easy. Your kids, number one, have prepaid debit cards. They're attached to mom and dad's account. And very quickly, I can move money over to my kids' accounts, which is the allowance. We can then take some money and we can have that money permanently saved so it's not in a spending spot. We can also then track exactly what they buy with the money so we can have a discussion about maybe using money on good stuff. Here, here's a problem that I ran into when my kids were young. My daughter, Autumn, loved spending money on just junk. And so initially, I'd stop her from doing that. But you know what was a better lesson? After she got her allowance, I let her buy a bunch of junk with it. And then I circle back about a week later and all the junk was either broken or gone. And it was a much, much, much better discussion that we had once she'd already made the mistake and now autumn is a very savvy shopper today still like me likes to spend money so she's got lots of tricks that she uses to hide money from herself at 22 years old she's already doing this stuff so help your kids build great habits famzoo makes that incredibly easy stackybenjamins.com forward slash famzoo it's a prepaid card plus a financial education for kids all in one award-winning app all right when I first heard about Justin Howell and his company Rise, spelled R-I-Z-E, 
I was excited enough to bring them on the show back in March. We'll link to that in our show notes page at stackybedjamins.com. But it did stuff that a lot of other apps did. And Justin kind of gave me a smile when I asked if there was more coming. Well, man, is there more coming? Because when I saw the two new things they do, he took this one bare bones, cool bare bones app and put two things that I really, really like on it. So I said, Justin, you want to come back on the show and talk about it? And he has. And uh, well, let's talk to him. Justin Howell from Rise, R-I-Z-E, coming down to the basement. And Justin Howell from Rise joining me in the basement. Have a seat, man. How have you been? Uh, life is good, man. Life is good. Always good to be back in the basement. Well, I'll tell you, you have been busy since we talked to you. I think we talked to you in March. You've been a busy, busy boy. You are not kidding. It's all been good busy, though. It's it has a nice kind of problems to have, right? Absolutely, yeah. And I want to get to that. But for people that missed you when you were in the basement last time, tell everybody what Rise is. It's an app. Yes. Rise at its core is an intelligent online savings account that helps you automatically save for goals that you care about. So you sign up for Rise and you choose one or more savings goals. That might be building an emergency fund, saving for a down payment on your home, that vacation you've been meaning to take, your wedding, what have you, anything that you want. You securely connect your bank and then we automatically move money from your checking account to your Rise account on a schedule that you choose. So you're always in control. We encourage you to do it right after each paycheck so you're paying yourself first because we really designed Rise to kind of act like a 401k for everything else in your life. You don't see it. You don't spend it. Yeah. You get unlimited goals. You can transfer money back and forth anytime you want, completely free of charge. We give you a great interest rate, currently 90 basis points, 0.9%. That's 15 times the national average. And uh, as a riser, you choose what you pay to use the system. And it's funny because it's so simple, but behaviorally, you know, it's so powerful to hide money from yourself. Yeah, it really is. You know, instead of trying to do that incredibly arduous process of, of budgeting, for example, and trying to save whatever's left over, you know, guess what? In a world designed for spending, the world wins. There's never been anything left over. If you just make a little mental flip and put that money that you're committing to save aside each month first and spend the leftovers, it works. It's it's kind of like magic, but it really, really works. Now, you're not saying pay yourself first. That's crazy talk. I've never heard that before. No, I'm kidding. No, particularly <laughs> a Stacking Benjamins listener is probably the first time they've ever heard yeah, that term, right? Absolutely. Yeah, they don't learn anything here. You know that. If you learn something here, keep it to yourself. But, yeah, exactly. But I, I do want to... I do want to talk about this. You guys, when we talk about you being busy, you didn't stop there. That's all the stuff we explained in March. You've kind of gamified it now where you have these power-ups. Tell me what power-ups are all about. So the idea behind power-ups, which is a new set of features we just launched, is all about helping you save more and reach your goals faster. Because look, our generation of millennials, right, we, all, we want it all now. We don't want to just live in the future. We want the life that we envision as fast as we can possibly get it. So our goal is to help you actually do that a little bit faster. So we're going to be releasing a whole bunch of power-ups over the course of the rest of this year. We just launched the first two called Accelerate and Boost. So I can choose as a Rise user which one of these I take advantage of. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Accelerate is pretty simple just automatically increases your monthly savings by 1% each month. So if you're saving $200 this month, you'll save $202 next month. And that doesn't feel like much, but if you do that over the course of a year, you'll actually be saving almost 13% more than you are right now, thanks to the magic of compounding. And using that same $200 example, you'll have actually saved over $160 more over that year than if you just kept your savings at $200. I think that's kind of the... Yeah, I think that's so cool. OG has talked about whenever he would have clients come into his office or when he meets with them virtually that, uh, you know, he would tell people, hey, what if we save just $25 more now than we were the last six months? You know, everybody goes, oh, I can save $25 more. He, you know, before you know it, if you do that four times a year, there's more money. And th this automates that whole process, Justin. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. All those little changes end up making a huge difference for you. Let me ask you a question about that. Do I get some type of notification that, hey, you know, my savings rate is going to go up by 1% or does it just automatically happen? Just automatically happens for you. And then okay. we'll let you know at the end of the month, hey, guess what? This month you save $202 instead of $200. Nice job. Gotcha. Awesome. And then let's talk about the other one, Boost, because this is one also I know a lot of people out there are looking for this right now. Yeah, Boost is even a little bit cooler. So 
Boost just monitors the checking account you have attached to your Rise account. And once or twice a week, we'll just pull out a little bit of spare change when it looks like you can afford it. That's going to range from just a couple pennies up to a maximum of $5 or 5% of your monthly savings. This is not going to be the primary way that you save through Rise, right? That's still your monthly savings where you're paying yourself first, but Boost will give you just a little extra boost, a little extra juice on the side of that. And uh, there's other companies, I'm thinking of one in particular that will go unnamed, that now charge for really what you're doing with Boost. My question to you, Justin, is, is this something that people are going to start off on and you're going to have to find a way to monetize this later on, so you're going to start charging for later? You know, I, I really hope not. Let me explain how we actually make money right now at Rise. And you pay what you want to use Rise. So we encourage you to contribute $1 to $3 a month or so. That's on average what people are kind of putting into the system for us. But if you're in a financial pinch or just getting started saving, you can pay nothing and have full access to the system. You know, that's part of our commitment to transparency uh, and putting our risers first. You know, we succeed when you succeed. Can you talk at all about the other power-ups that are on the way? We can't give away all the secrets here. <laughs> That's part of the fun. <laughs> but they're going to be equally part of, all along the same theme of kind of helping you increase your savings and help you get even more out of those savings. That's, so that's some pretty cool stuff out there that might involve some things like, I don't know, some investments or, or things like that. Oh, man. More, oh, more to come. A lot of stuff in the works. A lot of stuff in the works. Well, yeah, it was. I was so surprised. I think only one time have we had one of our fintech companies back on as quickly as uh, you've come on, which is we had Thomas Smythe from Ask Trim when they made some big changes. Uh, so it's really exciting to see how fast you're working, Justin. And I can't wait to talk about the next steps. Yeah, you and me both. You know, it's uh, it's one of those things where it's taken a while to build Rise. There's a lot of complexity here, but I feel like we're really starting to hit our stride as a company. And it's it's really cool to now have Rise out in the world, thousands of people using it, putting tens of thousands of dollars towards their savings goals each week. It's really gratifying given all the work that's taken to get to this point. And, and we're just accelerating from here. The site is risemoney.com. You also have apps on uh, on every platform. Is that true? Actually, not yet. That's part of what's coming out this year. We purposely designed Rise to begin with to be a very mobile-friendly web app. That's right. Because That's Partly right. because, you know, if you're looking at your savings every day, you're peeking, you're cheating there, you're not quite doing it right. You know, we'll keep you fully informed as to how things are going and how much you're saving. We have a lot of SMS functionality, so you'll hear from us on a very weekly basis. But we actually will have native iOS and Android apps out towards the end of this year. But right now, yeah, people do still want them. Well, well, sure. But right now, web-based, it works on mobile. It works everywhere. It's beautiful on mobile. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and it's risemoney.com. We'll have a link in our show notes to Stacking Benjamins at stackingbenjamins.com. Justin Howell, thanks for hanging out with us, man. Thanks for having me on again. Big thanks again to Justin for coming down. Isn't that great? Just one app now and the three things that that app does. I'm so excited to see what the team at Rise does. And uh, I got a note from Erica while Justin and I were talking. And here's an offer just for Stacking Benjamins listeners. You'll get $10 to kick off your first savings goal if you sign up at risemoney.com forward slash Benjamins. R-I-Z-E money.com forward slash Benjamins. So $10 off for your first savings goal pretty cool. Thanks to uh, Justin and Erica over at Rise for doing that for uh, friends of the show. So see, we made you 10 bucks already. That's it. Don't say you get nothing out of this show. All right, let's head back to our discussion with Whitney, Len, and Greg. My story, back to money stories, I was to pay my way through uh, through college, I was a disc jockey, and I was playing this high school dance in Coldwater, Michigan. And afterwards, I go to Taco Bell, and I'm in the, I'm in the drive-through, and my bill comes to like five dollars and sixty-five cents. And so I pull up, I give the person six dollars, and they hand me back ten dollars and thirty-five cents. So I get this. Wow. So hold on. <laughs> it's a good ROI. You should have quit while you were ahead, Joe. Well, no. So so I'm standing there. I clearly have the wrong change in my hand, right? I've got the wrong amount. 
I know it's a I mean I mean it's a wrong amount by a mile. And uh I remember this this emo Phillips joke where he said uh he was walking through the park and he found this wallet that had like two hundred dollars in it. And he said, I thought to myself, if I lost a wallet with two hundred dollars in it, what would I want to have happen? And Emo says, then my brain said, I'd want to be taught a lesson. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting there with $10.35, way too much money. My brain goes, I'd want to be taught a lesson. And I smiled and waved. And I'm sure a Taco Bell employee uh, learned a lesson that night. So you didn't give him his, you didn't tell him? Isn't that great? Yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the Joe. Joe stole money from Taco Bell story. <laughs> Joe's a reprobate story. Don't hold it against me. I was a Len. I was like a twenty-one-year-old college kid. I needed cash. It's probably about three or four hours worth of minimum wage. <laughs> you know what? When I was twenty years old, I worked as a checker at a grocery store, and I inadvertently gave a man. People would cash their checks on Fridays. They'd come in and cash. This is before you could deposit instant deposit your your checks in the bank. They would come and they'd bring their checks to the grocery store. You know, and you'd get their paycheck. And I inadvertently gave this man an extra $100. And oh. at the end of the night, they counted the till. They were $100 short. And it was my till. See, uh, it scared the bejeebus out of me. I didn't oh, know if no. they were going to you know, call the cops. It was a total innocent mistake. So you but, had to, uh, did you have to pay back 100 bucks? No. You know what? I didn't because I was in a union. And, and the union protected me in that case. So I actually got my money's worth on my dues for that month. You guys are <laughs> You guys are starting to make me feel a little guilty about not giving the Taco Bell person back the <laughs> back the change. At the time, I just yeah. thought it was funny. I uh, might have drove away too. It's okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding you. I don't hold it against you, Joe. Yeah, there was a time at a at a Texas Ranger game. I'm standing in the concession line. Guy in front of me reaches down and picks up a couple bills and goes, "Oh, hey man, you dropped this." And I had just had my wallet out, and I'm like, "Oh, thank you." And I take it and I stick the money in my wallet. And the guy goes, "Yeah, you don't want to miss that money." I'm like, "Yeah, you're right. I wouldn't." And I had, you know, ten dollar bills. So I'm like, "Yeah, twenty bucks." I go back to my seat, and I don't know what I'm messing with my wallet, and I realized the guy had picked up two one hundred dollar bills off the ground. And handed them to me and said, hey, you don't want to you don't want to miss out on that money. But so what do you do with that? I've got two one hundred dollar bills. It's cash. What do you do with that money? Do you take it back to the concession stand and turn it in? I mean, what do you what do you do with two one hundred dollar bills that some dude in front of you handed to you? Greg, I, lo I love how Joe's trying to buy his way out of the guilt. <laughs> the story. Well, no, he's not going to. He, he kept the money. <laughs> of course, I kept the Twice. money. I, I, in this case, I didn't know what to do. Whitney, what would you have done? Oh, my God. I probably would have kept it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> two, two $100 bills cash. It's like it doesn't have somebody's name on it, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Len, come on. I would have kept it. Yeah. To me, that's a windfall. That's totally different. Yeah. If you find, to me, this is my opinion, you find $200 bills just laying on the ground and there's no, there's nobody can, you know, eh, that's a windfall. Yeah. You know. Yeah. All right. I feel way better. Taco Bell kid. <laughs> <laughs> Go screw yourself, Taco Bell kid. All right. That puts a cap on this, as usual, this uh, disaster of a podcast. Greg McFarlane, tell us at some point, uh, Control Your Cash 2, Return to Control Your Cash is coming out. Yep. As soon as my uh, artificial knee heals, I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be right on that. Excellent. Fantastic. Len Penzo, what's going on at LenPenzo.com? Hey, I've got a story on the importance of recognizing hidden value in the things you buy. I know it sounds boring, but please, please, people, please come to my site, lenpenzo.com, <laughs> and read it. Somebody come there. I put so much work into this story. <laughs> the it was other, a slow week. I couldn't think of anything else to write. And the other reader is so lonely without you there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Whitney Hansen, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you, guys. It was so much fun. Well, let's talk about the Money Nerds podcast. What do you got? Because you've always got crazy stuff happening on the show. What's coming up? Coming up, I've got a gal that's talking about how she made a lot of money in the tech industry and transitioned out of that and is now coaching women how to become more assertive when you're working in the tech industry as well. So that's an upcoming interview that I'm pretty excited about. I just, I was listening to the How I Built That podcast and they were talking to the woman that runs uh, Rent the Runway and she's just talking about the same, the same stuff, especially in tech where there's been so many reports of sexism. That's a, that's a big topic, Whitney. 
Yeah, it'll be a fun one. I'll keep you guys posted on it. Awesome. And we'll link to it in the show notes at stackyvegements.com, but it's the Money Nerds podcast. All right, guys. Thanks for playing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, that's going to do it for this episode, and it's going to do it for this eight weeks. And let me tell you what happens during the off week, because we've got lots of great stuff for you coming up next week. While we're gone, Griffin the intern, the Fintern, plays some of our favorite episodes from the past. Sometimes we dig deep. Sometimes we play really popular episodes again. I prefer personally to play episodes that not a lot of people heard, but that were really good. And usually that's because I gave the show a crappy title, so the numbers weren't as high as they should have been. So uh, excited about the next week. I'm going to leave those a surprise for you right now. I like that. Uh, but let's go back and talk about this week. If you missed Monday and Wednesday, Gooding, Rock and Roll and Money. Man, we've been playing Gooding here in the basement nonstop since he's... In fact, Steve... When, uh, when Steve was engineering the show, I don't think he'd ever heard Gooding music, and he was talking about how much he liked the song Hey Hey. I prefer Mountain of the two songs that we played, but uh, just good stuff from Gooding on Monday. Uh, and how passionate about financial education. That was really cool. And then on Wednesday, who's a better investor and saver, men or women? Alexandra Tossig was here, and if you missed that, you missed We Don't Really Care Who Is Better. I'll leave that if you want to uh, listen yourself. But we care is to emulate those traits. And it's really exciting. Some of the tips that she shared from Fidelity, it was good stuff. That was this last week. And uh, we went over next week. Let's talk about our game. You have only a couple days left to get in on the game. We're going to close out the game on September 1st. And then when we come back, OG and I are going to begin the new game immediately. However, we won't be able to close out this game because we're recording a little bit ahead because I am headed to France. So I'll talk more about that later, but uh, we will close out this game. We're going to have a little moratorium and then, and then probably about halfway through September, we'll start talking about uh, who won this game. So new game coming up. We're going to reboot for those of you who are new to the show. When we have Friday shows, not only is it a different format with our roundtable guests of experts from around the nation and elsewhere, but it also is the time that because OG's not here with me, my normal co-host, I play a game to entertain myself, bring you along for the ride. So that's, that's what happens on Friday and we're just finishing out the current game. All right, that's it. I didn't even talk about what the game was, was it? We're doing movie titles that describe Doug's life. And I love this one that we just got from Sharon. Sharon said she can't believe that nobody has talked about this one before. Clueless. Nobody said clueless until Sharon just did. Isn't that funny? Like that's that. That's, that's almost first one you should think of when you think of Doug. She also says, by the way, P.S. You should binge watch Psych. Great characters. Very funny. Lots of pop culture references, especially from the 80s and great guest stars. You'd love it. I do love it, Sharon. Uh, my daughter, Autumn, who we were talking about earlier, we were talking about Fam Zoo. Uh, Autumn loves Psych, and I've watched many episodes of the show with her. And it's funny because I'm always binge watching something else, but I got to go back and watch it from the start. The issue with me is I've seen so many episodes, it's almost like Seinfeld. When I go back and I see an episode I haven't seen, I'm like, wow, I thought I saw all of them. But I've never watched Seinfeld from beginning to end. So maybe I got to take Sharon's advice and, and do that. All right, that's it. Have a fantastic week with the Finter. Next week, we'll see you back here on Labor Day. We're kicking off the new eight weeks. We're talking 529 plans with James DeUlio. And then uh, Wednesday of that week, we're talking to Douglas and Heather Bonaparte on the Millennial Money Fix. Fixing your whether you're millennial or not, you're going to like that. Uh, and if you know anybody who has uh, kids going to college or if you're going to college or you want to know different college savings plans and the future of those, talking that on Monday. But of course, as you know, that's just one little part of the show. We're going to have our usual financial circus going on of all kinds of other stuff on those days. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Go Stacks and Benjamins. Bye-bye. Special thanks to Whitney Hansen for joining us. You'll find out more about the Money Nerds podcast wherever you listen to your favorite money show that teaches you absolutely nothing. I wonder where the hell that is. Huh. Can't be here. Greg McFarlane appears courtesy of Control Your Cash. 
Len Penzo appears courtesy of LenPenzo.com. This show was created by Joe Saul Cihai, produced by Richie Rutter Reese, and engineered by the amazing Steve Stewart. Kathleen Selmans handles design, newsletter, and classroom opportunities. If you'd like to learn more, head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash classes. Online, visit us on Twitter at at SBenjamin'sCast or on our Facebook page. Shannon Cowan is our community manager and social media guru. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I'm pretty much the guy in charge of everything around here. Trust me, this well-oiled machine didn't get like this all by itself. SB Podcasts may receive payment on the show from sponsors and guests in the form of books, giveaway items, discounts, or other remuneration. There's no way you would take advice from these dorks, but like Joe's mom always says, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only, and before making any financial moves, consult with a real financial advisor. Wait! Where are you going? I was going to make espresso.